described as the coolest little capital in the world. And perched on the southern tip of New Zealand's North Island, or lush, green and gorgeous, Wellington is all that and more. Charming and energetic, this is a political centre without the intrigue and aggression that most capitals are known for. Instead, it boasts an almost small town feel. It emphasises art and the great outdoors. a little too emphatically. What's biting cold in a wind speed of 35 knots when there's an ICC calling your name? And consider yourself warned, this abandon they seem to bring to most things, including food, as you will see. Cuba Street, Wellington's answer to Oxford Street, only with more personality and fewer trigger happy tourists. The cafe culture that they're so proud of spills out across it and actually makes it kind of hard to choose where to start. Until that is, I stumbled upon this. I suppose it's only fair, why have Cuba Street if you can't have Fidel's? I wasn't sure what to expect, a crumbling colonial style facade, the sound of a maracas, the sweet smell of plantains flying in the back, not so much though there are surprise surprise a few token pictures. Turns out it's about as Cuban as the street it sits on but happily is none the worse for it. once I start examining what's on offer and there's lots to choose from. This is why it's back to capacity. Wow, so there's a bacon and egg plan, there's pastrami sandwiches, vegan sandwiches, a tuna melt, falafel, there's Fidel's chocolate up there but you know what? I think I'm gonna go with this first. Hello front courtyard and hello menu. Lots to choose from. I'm actually thinking since we're here and uh, we're on Cuba Street, there is a Cuban burger, there is the red Castro, um, there's some nice chimichurri. Right, I think what I need first is some help. Salad, it's a good chicken and avocado yeah. salad, and all the pizzas are pretty nice. Looking at the red castro because that oh, seemed yeah. fitting since we were here yeah, today. Yeah, that's a nice one. Yeah. yeah. And so, before you could say Havana heaven five times fast, the food starts to arrive. The red castro, as promised, not exactly revolutionary, being a giant pizza swimming with peppers, cheese, and sausage. But surprise, surprise, it's one of the few dishes you can actually say is better than the sum of its parts. It may not be Cuban, but I have to say, this is delicious pizza. Mm. Mm. There's another pizza that's no doubt a nod to the Spanish influences on Cuban cuisine. Grilled chicken with black beans, a amount of guacamole, some sour cream and a nacho. Once you wrap your head around it, it's pretty good. Reason enough to go to Mexico next. There's also the Cuban burger, which as it turns out is a very tasty burger. There's the Cuban fish taco, as it turns out a very tasty fish taco. Mm. Oh, that's good. Not a hint of Cuba that I can pick up on, but still, basic, tasty, hearty fare. So for buzz and brightness served with some seriously satisfying fare, it's easy to see why Fidel's inspires, well, such fidelity. NDTV's Cricket app, Android and iPhone. Fastest scorecard, special analysis, 
and much more. Download free ndtv.com slash apps.